uh, lectures on history uh, throughout the year and I request all the historians to come forward and present their lectures in our seminars. Uh, for that, as an inauguration, I request Dr. Rajendra Agaru to inaugurate this history, uh, history series. And as the first one, Dinaji has come forward and uh, started giving this lecture on uh, uh, present history and Bharati uh, history and uh, looking into the future. So, in that aspect, I request Dr. Rajendra Agaru, our advisor and uh, mentor of this Vaya Sosthi Samiti, to uh, inaugurate this. Uh, series of these three lectures. Sri Guru Namaha. My respects to Swamini Sadhvidyananda Ji. Oh. And respected Leena Mahindala Ji, respected Sri Prabhakar Rao Ji and, and other dignitaries and other friends, learned people. My namaskars to you all. Uh, at the outset, I have to confess that I thought that this meeting would be about a history. Then I, I realized that just now I realized that it is about Charitra. In Telugu, the Charitra means history. So I was wondering about whether it is about the distortions in our history, etc. But now I just saw the, uh, the write-up by uh, Leela Ji, Leena Ji, that it is about the Indian character. So it is about how, how universal our Indian value system is about how universal we, the, our literature and our ethical, our texts of ethics, all these books are. So I think I will try to say a couple of words about uh, the universalism in, uh, in our Indian literature. So we, I will start with that, uh, with that uh, very famous uh, uh, say assertion of Indians now, that uh, India is the Vishwa Guru. That is our assertion, isn't it? So if we just think, how is it, how is it, how are you going to justify it? Somebody asked me, how are you going to justify that you are a Vishwa Guru? So I have to give some reply. So I just thought about it uh, some time ago. And uh, this is how I thought. That. that is, what do our Upanishads say about the extreme, about the supreme reality? The supreme reality, in the, if you ask the religions, suppose you ask the Western religions, the two dominant Western religions, they will say, okay, our God is there, he is there in heaven, the God is there, there is, a, there is another person called Satan, God is there sitting in heaven on some golden throne, etc., etc. And he has created man and then that, uh, he has created the universe in about six days and he has taken rest and all the, this is the type of uh, the theory of causation which they say. And uh, what, what do the Indian texts say? Our basic texts are our Upanishads, that is Upanishads means that is part of the Vedas. And uh, the subsequent texts which have come to elaborate the Dharma which is mentioned in the Vedas. Itihasa and Purana are basically they have come to elaborate the Dharma, the Pravrutti Dharma and also the Nevrutti Dharma which has been mentioned in the Vedas. So what do our texts say about the Supreme Reality? They don't say that, uh, and the people who wrote our uh, who visualized or rather who had the vision of our Upanishads, they were almost like, they were like the present day scientists. They were actually contemplating on the nature of reality without any agenda. They had no agenda to establish a religion. They had no agenda to spread an empire. They had no agenda to cash out of some king and then with the royal power they did not want to conquer the earth. So they had absolutely no agenda. They were sitting somewhere in the forest. And then they were trying to see who I am I, what is my, how, 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 how am I connected with this universe. And if I want to examine, if I want to contemplate on the nature of reality, I have to start with my own qualification about how I am, how I am qualified. You see, if you are examining something, you have to examine the examiner also, whether I am having the proper instruments to conduct the experiment. And what are the instruments which I, which I have to, to know the reality. And the only instruments which I have are my own sense, uh, five senses and the mind. For example, in Taittiriya Upanishad, when the son goes to the father, the father tells, what all you have, the laboratory which you have is your own mind and the five senses. And with that, you have to do that experiment. That is Annam, Pranam, Chachu, Srotram, Mano, Vajamiti. So that is what he says. And he also gives the framework in which he has to contemplate. And what is told in that about the Supreme Reality, we say that that, su that Supreme Reality is not some person who is sitting in heaven. It is an entity. It is an impersonal entity which is defined as Satyam, Jnana, Anantam, Brahman. 
that is it is of the nature of infinitely existing consciousness and apart from that consciousness nothing else is this and that consciousness is manifesting as this universe so that is what our our siddhanta says so when this is said of course this is told in gayatri upanishad and shankaracharya has written about four five pages commentary and if you want to listen to that commentary uh, from some swami ji some swami ji and probably the swami ni here they will tell for about 10 days <laughs> because the commentary is so elaborate about what is satyam and what is jnanam and what is anantam so the in very in very very short terms it is something which is always existing what all exists the what all the world we see is something which is ephemeral which is always changing in nature and all this change takes place against the backdrop of some unchanging entity and that unchanging entity is what we call the brahman and that brahman is appearing as this you know the whole universe today what what science talks about the phenomenology and the basic question about uh, whether matter is primary or whether consciousness is primary so these are the things which were contemplated which were thought of which were questioned and this was a debate in our upanishads so this is what we see about the highest reality and why i am saying this because when you know that highest reality is something which is not only not for your tribe if you take another religion if you take the western religions they are tribal religions they were just fortunate enough to catch hold of some army fortunate enough to conquer fortunate enough to spread but then basically they started as tribal religions my god and my god will throw the stones and he will drop pestilence on all others so that is what religions say so my god my god will only protect me and then he will destroy all other people whereas the indian philosophy doesn't say that indian philosophy says and about the nature of your own god whatever you whatever god be in that supreme reality you you want to visualize any form you visualize any form and you worship in that manner and the gita very very clearly says what is told in the upanishads it says yo yo yam yam tanum bhaktah shraddhaya chitam ichchati tasya tasya achalam shraddham kamiva vidha kamyam so if you want to visualize god in a particular way you call it lord krishna you call it lord vishnu or you call it lord shiva or you call it shakti you call it lalita any form and you visualize in that form and you are free there is so much of religious freedom and this is what we have to we have to realize that there is so much of uh, religious freedom and you can visualize the supreme reality in whatever manner you want and this is what is liberalism this is what is tolerance not only tolerance tolerance is not the right word this is actually acceptance we can say and this is what is real um, inclusiveness and this inclusiveness is something which is totally absent in any other religion and in gita krishna goes one more step and says yepi anya devata bhakta yajanti shraddhayan vita he says i am not a jealous god whereas bible says i am a jealous god whereas in gita gita says i am not a jealous god you worship any other form you worship any other form you are worshiping only one you are worshiping only one reality and that is what we also say in all our daily sandhya vandana also we say okay sarva sarva deva namaskara keshavam prati gachati so these these are statements such statements you just do not find anywhere statements like you you visualize god in any form you visualize god god in a, you see god in a stone you see god in a tree you see god in anything this is something which is just not not told so in any other religion so this is what when people say that hindus are fundamentalists etc etc that is absolutely ill conceived they are totally the people who just do not know and our greatest tragedy here is our own youngsters they are disconnected from this knowledge our greatest target now is now as prabhakar rao garu was saying we are all vayuvrutha gyana vrutha etc we are all vrutha but what what is needed is we need some youngsters youngsters have to read and youngsters have to know what is there in our books because that is what gives them confidence i challenge and say to to people in various meetings i challenge and say if you read bhagavad gita all your uh, uh, say uh, uh, whatever superstitions you have all those misconceptions will go away if you read bhagavad gita nobody can shake you just read gita and nobody can say nobody can come and say my god is the greater god etc etc and whatever god you have visualized in religion is such a delimited entity is such a jealous entity it is such an intolerant entity and god does not say you go and convert all people it is you it is you who you have put your words in god's mouth and there is a saying 
you tell me you are God and I tell you what you are. So you have put your words in God's mouth and you have said, okay, my God has said, okay, you go and kill people. My God has said, you go and convert all people. God doesn't say that. And in Indian texts, you never find these things. So this is our universalism. And uh, from this, when you visualize, when you have a clear understanding of what is the highest reality, from there, all our ethics flow. All our ethics flow. And our Dharma Shastra is very, very flexible. And if you see Dharma Shastra, for example, um, for this, I mean, uh, uh, of course, I am maybe overshooting my time. I will just tell you. Yaksha Prasna, for example, Dharma Raja, he, he says, what is, the, what is Dharma? Dharma is something, it is not something which is rigid. It can change. It changes according to time. It changes according to time. And even the Upanishad says it. Um, even the Daitari Upanishad, for example, there is a saying, Atha Yadite Dharma Vichikitsava, Rutta Vichikitsava, Asyat. It goes on and says, whatever is that, whatever is accepted by all the uh, truth loving elders of a particular locality. I made a very, very loose translation. Uh, the truth loving elders of a particular locality, whatever they say as right, that is what is Dharma. And as Dharma Raja says, Dharma Syadatvam Nihitam Guhayam. Mahajano yena gatasya pantha he says. So, dharma is something which is, uh, you, you have to ask your own conscience. And no other religion says, uh, says such uh, inclu- to- totally, totally liberal, totally all-inclusive statements. So, we are, we have to read our own text to see how liberal we are, how, in- how inclusive we are, how uh, the, there is no, there is, we don't need any lessons on uh, say, some tolerance and religious tolerance, etc. from anybody. So, the, our task is to see that all our youngsters, they become aware of these things. With these few words, I will, I am uh, very, very happy that uh, Sri Prabhakar has initiated this and I am very eager to listen to um, uh, Sri uh, Leela, uh, respected Leena Ji. And my some small constraint is I will be present till about 5.15 because later there is another meeting. So, I now take leave of you. Thank you. Right now, I will be 5.15.